The 1800s were times of corrupt yellow journalism. Many news presses had little or no legitimate research and instead used eye-catching headlines to sell more newspapers. Journalist Adolf Ox denounced all unreliable news sources and devoted himself to trustworthy reporting and writing. Ox was born in Cincinnati in 1868 to German-Jewish immigrants Julius and Bertha Levy Ox. Bertha Ox had moved to Knoxville, Tennessee in 1848. When the Civil War started in 1861, she sided with the Confederacy. Julius, on the other hand, chose to serve in the Union Army, a conflict that strained but did not divide the household. Early in his life, Adolf's parents modeled the importance of sticking to principles regardless of the discomfort they might cause others. This shaped many of the journalistic principles Ox used in his lifetime. At age 19, Ox moved to Chattanooga to take a job on the Chattanooga Times. Before long, Ox became its publisher, as biographer Elmer Davis observed, before he was even old enough to vote. It was at the Chattanooga Times that Ox established the principles that would make him the most influential newspaper editor in U.S. history. Many publishers, such as William Randolph Hearst and Joseph Pulitzer, printed distorted accounts of murder and scandal just to get their papers to sell. Ox found it risky to make a paper that was clean, dignified, and trustworthy. However, by distinguishing between news and opinion, Ox made the Chattanooga Times one of the South's most respected and prosperous papers. In 1896, an opportunity presented itself to Ox. He heard that the New York Times was available for purchase. While still holding ownership of the Chattanooga Times, Ox decided to buy the New York Times as well. He announced to his readers that it will be my earnest aim that the New York Times give the news, all the news, in concise and attractive form. When Ox bought it, the New York Times was having difficulty with sales. It had lost a lot of readers to Pulitzer's World and Hearst's Journal, which each sold for a penny. When Ox came, a copy of the New York Times sold for three cents. After many losses in 1897, Ox was advised to raise the price to a nickel. Instead, Ox gambled that they would get more readers if he dropped the price to a penny. Ox was correct. By publishing all the news he thought was fit to print for a penny, their audience grew rapidly. If it had not been for Ox, the New York Times could have gone out of business completely. Its circulation rose from 780,000 readers during the 1920s from just 9,000 when Ox purchased it in 1896. To Ox, money was not first priority. He always put editorial independence ahead of profit. He made sure never to accept any advertising or contracts with the government so that his paper would stay pure and trustworthy. Although critics accused Ox of being too conservative on the editorial page, they admitted that even they depended on the Times for accurate accounts of events and objectivity in reporting. When Ox died in 1935, his legacy did not die out. After his death, the New York Times published an obituary commending what he did for the paper. To this day, the descendants of Ox still maintain control over the Times and it has become a prominent American daily newspaper with a circulation of well over one million. Ox was able to create an honest newspaper in a time of corrupt and dishonest news. He steered away from the sensationalist news and lowered the price of the paper. Adolf Ox was able to bring new life to the New York Times and made people see journalism in a whole new light. <laughs>